Hi, my name is Brittany and I'm an educator at the St. Louis Zoo. For today's project, we're going to be creating our very own bird. In order to do that, we're going to need a few items. So find some blank paper. It can be sketchbook paper or notebook paper. We're going to need something to draw with, an eraser, and some coloring utensils. I chose colored pencils today, but markers or crayons work just as well. So choose whatever you prefer. We're going to discuss different parts of birds from their beaks to the different types of feathers all the way down to their feet. And you might decide to draw a bird that you know a lot about. Maybe a bird that you've seen while visiting the St. Louis Zoo or using your imagination and creativity, you might even make a bird that is a brand new species. Whatever you decide, I'm really glad you decided to join me today for this project. So take a moment to grab those items, come on back, and let's get started. To help with today's project, I brought my sketchbook as well as some bio facts that I'll share with you throughout. So let's go ahead, open this up, and get started. We're going to first talk about bird feet. And these are just three examples. There are more different types of bird feet out there. And if you're curious, I definitely suggest doing some research to learn more. Let's start up here. This is a passerine foot. Passerines are like our songbirds. They have three toes in front, one in back. Tiny little claws. This foot is really good for perching on branches or twigs. Raptorial feet are very strong feet, a lot of muscle, as well as long, sharp talons on each toe. That's gonna help this bird to rip apart meat into smaller, easier to eat bites. Down here is our palmate or webbed foot. This is my personal favorite. This is what you'll see on a lot of our aquatic birds and there's webbing that connects the toes together. Next up, beaks. Now beaks are a really important part of a bird. And if you've ever been out in nature and have observed a bird and not known what it was, Sometimes looking at the beaks can give us clues to at least figure out what they eat. So over here is an example of a bird that would eat seeds or grains. When I look at this beak, I think about it as a triangle or even a mountain shape. This one here is more of an aquatic. So I would see this in our geese and ducks as a flat bill. Fun fact about ducks is they're actually a little bit more omnivorous than what most people might think. They'll eat both plants and animals. Over here is an example of a bird of prey. So we have the sharp talons on the feet, but also a sharp hook on the beak. That's gonna, again, help with tearing pieces of meat into smaller, easier to eat bites. Down here is an example of a nectar eater. And this is a hummingbird, which as we know, really likes those longer, thinner flowers so they can get nectar out of those very easily. Last but certainly not least, my favorite bird to visit at the St. Louis Zoo is our flamingo. Flamingos are filter feeders and their beak is a very interesting shape. When I look at their beak, I almost think about it like a waterfall where it comes rushing down and goes straight down, just like that. I have two examples of beaks to share with you today, so I'll move this sketchbook out of the way. I have a great horned owl skull. There it is. And this skull is a replica model of a real skull, so it's made of plastic. But you can see that hook that comes straight down, and it's very sharp. So this is going to be an animal that eats meat. Now I have a really fun one planned for you up next, and I'm sure you're going to know it right away as soon as I bring it into the screen. What is this skull? What do we think? If you said toucan, you're right. This is a toco toucan skull. Again, this is a replica, so it's a plastic model. This is an example of a fruit eater. And they have a very interesting shaped beak for sure. <laughs> now another characteristic with birds and one that many of us think about are their body covering. Birds are covered in feathers. 
but not all feathers are the same. So I'm gonna take you through some of these feathers and I have some examples to share too. So we have wing feathers, tail feathers, but there are also smaller ones called contour feathers, semi-plumes, and down feathers. There are even more specialized feathers called phyloplumes and bristles. And these feathers are not found on all birds. When we think about a feather, there are different parts. The barbs are going to be the main part that probably what we think about the most. So this is an example of feather I'd like to share with you today. And this is from a blue and gold macaw. Birds will drop their feathers naturally and grow new ones. So all the feathers that I share with you today are ones that were collected from birds that have dropped them at the zoo. When we look at the barbs, we'll see that everything's connected really well. Up close with the barbs, and I'll show you this example here, there's something called barbules. Each barb has different barbules. They connect together like Velcro. So when you see little splits like this, the barbules have released from one another. A lot of times you'll see birds preening their feathers, pulling at their feathers. There's important reasons for doing that, keeping their feathers in tip top shape, but also connecting it back together, just like Velcro. Another example of a flight feather, this is from a battler eagle. And this is a much larger bird so we'll see that flight feather is very large too. Up next is a feather that you might recognize. It's gonna look very different than the two feathers I shared previously. Any guesses? If you said ostrich, you're right. This is an ostrich feather. And it's not going to connect the same way. You can actually see my hand through the feather because ostrich, they don't fly. And to have your feathers, the barbules together is going to help with flight. Now feathers do indeed come in all shapes and sizes. Here's an example of a feather that has some other meaning. So while some help birds to keep warm, others might help them um, to fly. This one here has another purpose. So these are two feathers from a peacock. And only the males have these feathers. They have them for two reasons. The first reason is during the breeding season, they will grow these to attract a mate. And the second reason is it can scare predators away with what looks like eyes. And as you can see, it's definitely not a good flight feather compared to the wing feather we just looked at with the macaw. Getting into our contour, semi-plume and down feather Here's an example from an owl. So this would be a wing feather. Here's an example of a semi-plume. And lastly, our down feather. It's kind of difficult to see. Let's see if I put it on the book, if we can see it a little bit better. So it's a very soft feather and the down feathers can keep birds warm. So I think about when birds are born and they don't have their adult feathers yet. They're covered in what almost looks like hair. I've had a lot of students say, Miss Brittany, this looks like a hairy animal when I show pictures of young birds, but it is just down feathers. And the purpose is just to keep them warm. All right, I'll get these out of our way. I hope you guys are feeling inspired with your bird creation so far. Now thinking about how the feathers line up, these are just two quick examples. Um, when wings are out, we'll have our contour feathers more up above the smaller feathers and then the longer primaries come out. 
So we have primaries and secondary feathers. And it's not necessary to know the difference between that, but if you are curious, I highly recommend doing some bird research. It's really fun to learn more about birds. When feathers are together, so on a wing, just remember that since we do have different lengths of feathers, when you're drawing a wing of a bird that's up against its body, you're also going to have some of that differentiation. Now that we've gone through so many different characteristics of birds, I would love to know what you're thinking about with your creation. When considering what kind of bird I wanted to create, I thought about things that I really like my favorite color, the types of birds I enjoy watching, and also the type of habitat I think it would live in. I'd like to share with you what I created. This bird is called the sugar plum dancer. It lives in the rainforest and it loves to eat insects. So the things that I chose, a sharp pointy insect eating beak, some gripping passerine feet, these very fancy feathers. I love learning about birds and the birds of paradise. That group in particular is so neat. They do these really intricate dances and they can come in all sorts of different colors. I also love plants and orchids are one of my favorite flowers. So I decided the rainforest made the most sense. That's where orchids are found. And since the bird is my favorite color of green, it's gonna blend in well since rainforests are green all year round. As you create your bird, think about things that make you happy, things that you really like. Your bird can be your favorite bird that already exists. It can be a bird with polka dots. Whatever you want to create, just do it with all your heart. If you'd like to share what you create, I would love to see it. Get parent permission and you can share on one of our social media sites using the hashtag STLZooED or hashtag bring the STL Zoo to you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Until next time.